Right, so today we're basically going to combine everything that we've learned in the last two lessons and we're going to look at how we can actually use this change from linear to nonlinear equation. So in the practical world we might do some kind of experiment where we find a, a set of values and we want to see if they form some kind of relationship. Now from the table we can see that these values don't form any kind of a linear relationship but we might want to find out what its equation is and how we would do that is we'd have to relate it to some known equation so we'd have to have some idea what uh, this equation was related to okay so with that in mind say we take this experimental data and we want to relate it by the following equation okay so what we need to do is we need to change this equation into something that looks more like a linear function so we've been dealing with this the whole week so this shouldn't be very difficult at all so we'll start off by taking the equation and we see that we have some exponents and so the logical thing here to do is to log both sides. So we'll log the left and we'll log the right. And on the right we have some product, right, which we can use our log laws to split up. So again, on the left we have log of y and on the right we're going to get log of k. And I'm going to log and bring the power down at the same time. So we're going to get plus n log of x. And I'm just going to shuffle this around a little bit. And I'm going to write this as log of y equal to n log of x plus log of k. So now we've basically change this formula and we can say well we can now compare this to the formula for a straight line and so we can say that log of y is our big y and n could represent our m our gradient and then we can have log of x could be our big x and we could say log of k this could represent our C. So what we've determined here is that the value of n would be the gradient of our straight line, right? So this is this value for n here. So if we could if we could prove that this could plot onto a straight line, this new y equal to mx plus c, the, if we could calculate the gradient, we'd be able to calculate n. And in the same way, our value for k is tied into log of k. And so our y-intercept here would be log of k, which if we knew what the value of the y-intercept was, we could solve for k. Now, the question said we need to plot a suitable straight line graph and at the moment the values that we have don't represent any kind of straight line equation but what we've seen is we can model our y values with log of y and we can model our x values with log of x so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new table of values so here's our table and what we're going to do is we have our old table x and y and what we need to do is we need to we need to create a new table right in our straight line graph our y coordinate is calculated by log of y and our x coordinate is calculated by log of x and this is purely because of the way the equation has been formulated okay so what we'll do now is we're going to take our old table and we're going to take log of x for all the values and write down the new values that we get so log of 5 is going to give us 0 0.699 and log of y will give us 3.414 
and now we can do the rest for all the other values of the table. Right, now that we've completed the table, this new table, what we need to do is we need to plot these new coordinates onto a set of axes, and we need to see if they actually form a straight line. If they don't form a straight line, then the equation that we've selected isn't a representation for what the original values are modeled after. So the next step would be to plot these coordinates now onto a set of axes. All right, so we've plotted our points onto a set of axes, we've joined them, and we can see that they do form some kind of linear relationship. And this is obviously very useful to us because if they, this tells us that the equation that we have converted is a fair representation of what the data was telling us. So what we need to do now is we need to complete, like we have in the past, we need to complete our straight line equation. Okay, so at the moment we don't know the values of m and we don't know the value for c. And these are easy to calculate. m is just the gradient and c is just the y-intercept. So let's start with the gradient, m, right? That's just change in y over change in x. Now the best thing to do is we want to get the best possible uh, value for the gradient. And so we'll take the outermost values, okay? So we'll take coordinates from the outermost points to give us a, the most average gradient possible, okay? So that'll be this coordinate here and this coordinate here. So gradient, change in y over change in x. So we say it's 2.571, take away 3.414, all over 1.903, take away 0 0.699. So we'll stick that into our calculator, and we're going to get like a fairly long answer, and we can just round this to one decimal place, and this will be zero, oh, sorry, negative 0 0.7. So the gradient of this uh, line appears to be about negative 0.7. And intuitively, we can see that from the graph. So our value for m is negative 0.7. Right, c is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept, we can do one of two ways. We can either look at the graph and we can take the y-intercept directly from the graph as we have here or alternatively we could uh, substitute a coordinate any one of these coordinates back into our straight line equation with the new gradient and it would calculate it for us i'm just going to take the coordinate of the graph and i'm going to estimate that the y-intercept is about 3.9. Right, now we are able to calculate our values for k and n. So if we compare the equation that we've created and what we've uh, mapped against, m, sorry, n, the value of n that we're after, is represented by m. So it's a direct translation. m is equal to negative 0.7, so, therefore, n is also equal to negative 0 0.7. And c, well, we want to calculate the value for k. k is in this log of k, and it's equal to c. And we've just calculated that that's 3.9. And so what we can say is, well, the log of k must be equal to 3.9. This is just a logarithmic, we can convert, and so the base is 10, so k is equal to, it's equal to 10 to the power of 3.9, which is roughly 7,943. So we could actually now rewrite our equation for our original experiment as y equal to k, We've worked out k is 7,943 times x to the power of negative 0.7. Okay, let's have a look at another example. 
So here we are said, here's a table showing, again, some experimental values, whatever the experiment was, experiment was, and these are the results that we have found, okay? And again, we would have to make a very intuitive guess and say, perhaps these variables are related by this equation, y equal to a plus bx over x squared, where a and b are some constants to be found, okay? Now, they want us to draw the graph of x squared y against x. So they're actually giving us a hint about how we should change this equation into a straight line form, okay? So we're going to start with our base equation, y equal to a plus bx all over x squared. And the hint here is we want to model x squared y against x. X. In other words, we want, this is generally what they're saying, we want this to be y and this to be x. In order to make y x squared, I can see from my equation, I'll just multiply both sides by x squared. So I'll get x squared y up on this side, and on this side I'm going to get bx plus a. So if I had to compare this to a straight line equation, here would be my y, so this whole thing here would be the representation of my new y value. So I'd have to square x and then multiply it by y to get my y coordinate. b is going to be my gradient. x is just going to remain itself as x, and plus a is going to represent my y-intercept. Okay, so that would be, a, again, this, this is quite a nice one because these are going to be direct substitutions. If I can find M and C, I know the values for B and A. So if I want to draw a graph, I need to create new values. So we need to create a table of values. And we've seen that our X value is just going to be represented by X. And our Y value is going to be represented by X squared y. So the x values are very simple, and the y values require a bit of working out. So what we need to do is we need to take x, square it, multiply it by y. That's going to give us 19, 35, 51.1, 67.2, and 83. Right, now we have a table of values what we need to do is we need to plot these values and see if they form a straight line. If they do, then this equation that we've selected is a good representation of the experimental data that we had. Okay. So here's our straight line, or sorry, here's our plotted points. And as we can see, they do form a straight line. So this confirms to us that the equation that we have converted is therefore a good representation for the experiment. Okay, and now from here we can calculate the gradient and the y-intercept. So the gradient is just change in y over change in x, and again it's best to choose the outermost coordinates to give a better average for the data. So we'll take 83 less 19 over 10 minus 2 and this is going to give us a gradient of 8. Okay, nice round numbers. And visually from the graph, we can either pull the y-intercept off, and visually from the graph, it looks like c is equal to 3. If we didn't want to do this, what we could have done is we could have just substituted a coordinate into our equation, and we would have got 3. So if we want to find the values of A and the values of B, we need to compare them to the original equation. And we can see that B right, is modeled after M. right? So it's a direct solution. So if M is equal to 8, then B is equal to 8. And the nice thing is A and C are the same. If A is equal to, or if C is equal to 3, then A is equal to three as well. And so this equation could have been written as y equal to three plus eight x all over x squared. That could have been the original equation 
for the experiment. Now, the second part of the, or the next part of the question says an alternative method for obtaining a straight line for this equation would have been to plot x, y on the axis against 1 over x. And they say without drawing a second graph, estimate the gradient and the intercept on the vertical axis of the graph. So this time we want x, y against 1 over x, so we need to change our equation into some form. So let's start with the original equation again. So we have y equal to a plus bx over x squared. This time what I'm going to do is I'm only going to multiply by 1x, so I'm going to get xy equal to a plus bx over x. I'm going to split the terms up, so I'm going to get xy equal to a over x plus, if I have bx over x, I'm just going to end up with b, and what I'll do is I'll just pull this a out here, and that gives me 1 over x plus b. Right, so if I had to compare this now with a straight line equation, here's y, here's m, this is now x, and this is now c. Okay, so a now represents m, b now represents c, and remember, all we've done is we've taken the same equation and we've just written it differently. So our previous values for a and b are still valid. So here, a must be equal to 3 and b must be equal to c. So in my new graph, the new gradient would be 3 and my new y-intercept would be 8. Okay, so without having to plot that, Okay, without having to even plot that, we would have been able to work out the gradient and the y-intercept, just based on the fact that we had previously solved for a and b already, and then we can use that to determine the gradient and the y-intercept for our new equation.